Good morning guys and girls. Uh, today we're going to be talking about one of probably the most um, pragmatic species we, we have on our coast. One of the the most almost legendary type of species that we get and that's the the black mussel cracker. Also known as a punskop. That's like you've seen in Port St. John's the rock is named punskop. A lot of areas have got that sort of legendary status that comes from this fish. Um, also known as a black steen brush by some or a blow biscop to our Afrikaans friends. The scientific name Cymatoseps nasutus. Now that comes from Cymatoseps being swollen head. Now that the, the structure of the fish you'll see in the pictures, he's got quite a biggish swollen head. Almost looks it, the older the older they get, the more human they start to look. And then nasutus obviously pronounced nose. So you'll see in the in the old specimens, so the, the big males and things like that you'll get, he actually develops a nose. It looks like this big, big nose that sits on the front of his face like that. Um, rest of the fish, he's a gladiator. It's the best way to describe him. He's got darkish color to him, almost like ashen type of look. Um, big hard scales. He's, he's a big bruiser. He's a, he's a bit of a bully. He's got these big teeth to him, very, very large mouth. He can crush anything he wants. Um, obviously, muscle cracker that gets the name from that. Um, also, a fairly large eye, big, big tail, and a, a very chunky body. He's actually quite a difficult fish to describe. He's, he's, he's a fighter. He's, that, that's the best way to describe. Now, they are another endemic species. So now, when we say endemic, it means they only occur here. Now. That puts a very, very big responsibility on our shoulders because it means if we deplete the stocks, that's it, they're gone. So your endemic species are really the ones we need to focus on protecting. Those are the guys that need to be top on our list of, of keeping them safe, keeping the stocks in good nick. Because once they're gone, there's nowhere else for them to live. So it's, you, if you kill them off, that's it. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. Um, endemic wise, you're getting from Cape Agullis all the way up to Cape Vidal. Now, your main bulk of your stock, the main area you're going to be catching them, much like some of the other species, reef species we mentioned, Transkai. The, the deep reefs in the Transkai specifically. Now, the deeper you can go, the better, more likely you're going to find them. Um, they also, like a lot of reef fish, are residents. So, that means they don't move around a lot. So the fish that have been tagged in the uh, tagging projects that have taken place everywhere, they, they showed that you're recapturing them in the same spot. And it's not a migratory thing, they're coming back, it's that they're not moving from that area. They develop the area and then they protect it. That's their spot, that's their zone. Um, in terms of what kind of structure you're looking for for them, um, your really your high profile reefs. So now when you say high profile, when you look at them on the fish finder, very, very big pinnacle and very drop like that. So you're looking at big changes in depth. Those are the reefs that you're looking for. The ones that have got a lot of face structure vertically, if that makes sense. Um, your shallow profile would be your soft uh, flat plateau, similar to limestone reef here. It's not a lot of difference in depth between the top of the reef and the, and the sand. Um, high profile, bigger. Um, then that's for your adults, your juveniles, you're going to find them, rocky gullies, uh, any of your inshore ledges, things like that, and that's often where the shore anglers will catch them. Very rare to get your, your big boys off the, from the shore, they're really going to be restricted to the, the offshore zone, so your ski boaters. Now, in terms of maturity and size, they get to around about a meter in length. Doesn't sound that impressive, but when you look at the, the depth of the fish, the size of him, the chunkiness, it's actually a very, very impressive fish. Um, that'll be a, just shy of 40 kilos. You're looking at, a, I think, the biggest one ever, the biggest caught, officially, officially caught, is about 37.8. So it's just shy of that, that 40 kilo mark. And that fish was almost uh, 46 years old. It's 45 and a half. Now they determine that from. The, the ear bone structure, this is something that not a lot of people will know. They don't just guess the fish's age. The fish have got little bones in their ears. They're called otoliths. Now, ears. They, they don't have a big ear sitting on the side, although he's got a nose, it's internal structure. Um, now, if you cut that in half, or you can actually look on the outside, you get little rings, similar to how they age trees. 
every year or every season they put on a ring. So you count the number of rings and that determines how old the fish is. 10 rings, 10 years. Yeah. That's a very basic determination. There's a lot more science to it, sometimes different rings, but we won't bore you with that. But yes, the science behind it is they count the rings to age the fish. Now, like we said, uh, you do catch them commercially and recreationally. The, you're only allowed one per person per day. Um, and it has to be a 50 centimeter total length or above. Now this is where something called slot limits really comes in. We're talking a lot about conservation in this because the black muscle cracker has declined to almost less than 20% of its historical population. So that, if you think about it, 20% of, so there are only 20 individuals where there were 100 if that makes sense. Now what they really want to do with these is uh, implement what's called a slot limit which means very similar to the cob, where you can catch fish from 50 centimeters to say 70 centimeters, but then from 70 centimeters above, you have to let them go. So you're only allowed to catch that medium sort of size. And then your big older individuals, the ones that are more fertile, produce more eggs, those guys are then have to be released. Um, as we mentioned, resident species, so very important in your MPAs, because the MPAs are gonna protect an area, if that, black muskrat lives in there or if he can move into there he's protected there he won't get caught so very important for that um, now last of all baits whatever can get in its mouth it's going to eat um, from the shore you often catch them it's very similar to a rock cod you'll have a, you'll, you would have have or have some form of crayfish stuck inside him or in his stomach if you're going to gut him um, fish they love absolutely love fish Carantine is one of their, their favorites, so a live carantine on a good, good strong hook. Um, tackle wise, yeah, as we, as we say, it's a very strong hook. Your hoodlum is probably going to be the top hook for that. It, just, it doesn't open for anything, and believe me, a black muscle cracker will test that. Um, very, very strong, meaty, meaty mouth. And yeah, crustaceans, fish, uh, squid, octopus, anything like that, it's going to be going to go for it. Um, and yeah, a real. A real pragmatic species, as we mentioned, a real character of the reef. And one of those fish that you definitely have to have on your species list and should really consider not keeping. They, they're old fish, they grow very slowly, so maybe rather put them back and catch something else that you can keep, maybe a little game fish or something like that. But yeah, I know we've spoken a lot about conservation this